Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Miriam. I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we got Dan over there in the booth. Say hi to the people, Dan. I'm not falling for that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not happening again. Well, you just say hi at least. Be nice to our audience. Yeah, at least hi, be chat. At least be Thank pleasant. you. Okay. Thank you. Say hi, chat. <laughs> 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 Dan will be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure you tag at SCG Tour so he can see him and send his favorites over to us. As always, we are brought to you by Star City Games and Carnox Gaming Chairs. You can get 10% off one of these if you go to Carnox.com slash SCG. And, you know, we we mentioned that Dan is unfortunately not in a Carnox chair right now. No. For some reason, they give the directors a tiny little stool, and he is perched on it like a circus monkey. And... And, you know, it's un- it's it's really unfortunate. <laughs> I know. And how many is that? Three nails? Jeez, uh, that's three rusty nails on us. Yeah, popping up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so somebody just came in during the break and put another one in there. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, in between rounds, has to go in that box from Matilda that Matilda had to be oh, in when God. she got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're not supposed to tell that to people. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's, sorry. That's stays here. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, we uh, can, we can edit that Karnak, out, right? Karnak chairs, right? This is a live, right? We, yeah, we can edit that out. Okay, perfect. Oh, sorry, okay, we're fine. <laughs> yeah. Karnak chairs, 10% off. Karnak.com slash SCG. Use that link. You get your 10% off. Maybe maybe buy a chair for Dan. You said that very William Shatner-esque. Yes. You can buy it for 10% off. We'll It'll be nice. I'm not expecting. We'll, we'll send you. We'll send you Dan's home address and phone number and his credit card info, so you can buy with his money too. So it'll we'll, we'll be fine. But he'll get a chair. Can mail him all kinds of things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're gonna get so many pizzas. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, but they have to pay for them. What do we got cooked? Yeah. Speaking of pizzas, what do we got cooked up for this match, Mr. Ross Maryam? Good segue. Good segue. Thank you. We are I'm con- working on my transitions. Yes. <laughs> we are continuing to look at decks that we think can contend with Golos yes. in Throne of Eldraine standard. We got really aggressive in the first match between Reactors Aristocrats and Monored Aggro. We wanted to go fast, essentially. Yes. Yeah. And now we're getting significantly less aggressive. Yep. Uh, you know, you're you're still kind of a beatdown deck. This kind Golgari of. Adventure yeah. deck. We've seen different versions of Golgari Adventures. Uh, you're cutting down a little bit on the adventure synergies. Yeah. You know, there's no Beanstalk Giants, no Splash for a, a Bone Crusher Giant. It's really just Edgewall and Keeper and some of the cheap ones. And instead, you're playing bigger creatures that can really beat down, like Rankle and Cresting Beast. Yes. Both very powerful cards that have impressed us during our testing of the format. But also, importantly, cards that don't get blocked by 2-2 zombie tokens. Exactly. And, I mean, Golos can, like, chump Questing Beast, and sometimes that has to happen. So, you know, you're going to hear us bring up Golos a lot, even though we're not playing Golos. Because, uh, as a standard player, this is what you should be thinking of right away. If your deck has a good Golos matchup. If not, you know, you should probably leave it at home. Try something else. So this is a deck that got popular by Piotr Glukowski in his MPL split uh, this last week, and he took down his division, uh, awarding him a buy into the top 16 in MC7, for anybody who doesn't keep track of that. But it, the deck just looked really impressive. It was It was going over the top of Golos, in a sense, where it's playing creatures that were unable to be blocked, um, and then just getting a bunch of value with Innkeeper. I think Innkeeper was probably, if I could put a list of cards that we missed as far as interactions while we were testing when none of you got to play yet on Arena, when we were just uh, testing out with preview cards, Innkeeper wasn't even on our radar. And I I feel stupid for it because that card's insane. Yeah, incredibly powerful card. And that, you know, there are enough good adventure creatures. And the adventure mechanic is good by itself. That was another thing. Yeah. So it all sort of coalesced. It's like, well, we want to play cycling, right? Like where you kind of get extra value on a card, essentially. We want to play adventure creatures anyway. And then, so if we're going to want to put a bunch of adventure creatures on your deck, like, you know, let's put a couple, maybe ones that that wouldn't go in the deck. Yeah. Just a couple extras. And then you get to play this incredibly powerful one drop. You get to play once upon a time so that you can have your one drop on. On turn one consistently. Yeah. And it's Love Struck Beast's best friend. Yeah. And it's one one to yeah, turn yeah. So yeah. No, I th- I think it's uh it has proven to be one of the underrated cards of the of the set. There's always some like weird common that sneaks through. Yeah. You know, I remember like Thraben, nobody thought anything of Thraben Inspector when that card was revealed. But that card was busted. Except for this guy. Yeah. I wrote an article about underrated cards and Thraben Inspector was on the list. It- 
are you are you plugging your article from four years ago? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and check it out if you really want to get up to date and standard with the Raven Inspector in it. Great job, Ross. Yep. Great so magic card. So if we were taking a look at Ross's sideboard here, you would have absolutely not a clue what Ross is playing here. You would think that he just accidentally clicked things on his keyboard and came up with this sideboard of cards. But what kind of main deck is supplying uh, something this crazy, Ross? <laughs> You know what? You remember back in the day when Vivid Lands and Reflecting Pool were in standard? Yeah, and this it just, is not it. It didn't really seem to matter what cards people put in their decks. They just managed to cast all of them. It was like if this is a segue into an <laughs> article about Vivid Lands from three years ago. I'm leaving right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote this article. <laughs> but like, you know, th these decks were playing Cloud Thresher, Cryptic Command, and like Austere Command. It just never had any issues casting any of their yeah, cards. Yeah. It made no sense. Fires of Invention is just that. Once you have Fires of Invention, it just really doesn't matter how many color pips are on the card. You just get to cast it. You just get it. So yeah. with Fae of Wishes, we just put whatever we want on our sideboard. Any effect we want. Color pie be damned. Uh, I like so it. I'm going to be playing Jeskai Fires, uh, a, a pretty popular deck still, uh, and one that I think has some elements that make it well positioned moving forward. One, it has this sort of combo element. So even though, you know, we think of these fires decks as long game decks, and it, this deck can grind people out, yep. you know, with all the Cavaliers generating advantage uh, and Fae of Witches and things like that. So you st still can play that game. But sometimes you just set up a turn where you go ca red Cavalier Flame, some other big creature, give my team haste and like attack through. And Not only get... haste, but plus three, plus O oh, in haste because yes. you don't need the mana for Fires of Invention. Uh, so you have like usually around that time about six mana and then you can activate Cavalier of Flames three different times give plus extra six damage plus haste. Yes. I mean, it's unreal. Yeah. Yeah. So you have this combo element to just finish games when you need to stop to go playing these 30 turn games uh, if that's what you want to do. But then uh, you also have Deafening Clarion, which yeah. I think is important for two reasons. One, if everybody moves to aggressive decks to combat Golos, May Deck and Deafening Clarion is great. Yeah. That's obvious. But when we're trying to set up these combo kills, these zombie tokens these Golos decks have are going to get in our way. So instead, you can get maybe one creature down by on a turn, and then next turn, play your Cavalier Flame and Clarion away all their blockers so that you can get through for that base. And gain way. a bunch of life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, tons with yeah. uh, when you have two Cavaliers or something. Now, in a perfect world, that works, you know, but of course, sometimes you don't find Fire of Adventures, and then you're playing Clunky Five Drops. So I'm not the biggest believer in just something like Jeskai Fires. I, I tend to even like, you know, I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but like Golos Fires List as like a better Fires List, even though that, you know, I, I kind of threw up in my mouth a little bit just saying those words. But I just think that. Sometimes it can be really rough to get the fires deck to work, but it, it has shown success against these Golos decks because of its combo aspects. So, yeah, I mean, I'm excited to check it out. Yeah, I mean, we can still cast our creatures normally. We got some like planeswalkers at the bottom end to one, like Narset will dig for fires, yeah, but also you know, generate some card advantage and start working towards setting that up even naturally. It'll take a little yeah. bit longer but it's still possible. And I do think Narset is unbelievably good in this metagame right now. Just shutting off Hydroid Crisis is huge. You know, yeah. so just having a Narset in play, I think is very relevant. You're not going to see it be as relevant in this matchup because Narset's not that good. It's actually pretty bad in this matchup, but, you know, I mean, it's still sometimes is a dig through time and if, at worst, a half a dig through time. So. Half a dig through time, gain a little bit of life. Yeah. Still not the worst card. All right, so let's play some magic. I'm going to be on the play since I was defeated here in our uh, red v red battle. Indeed you were. All right, and don't forget to uh, take at SCG Tour if you guys want us to answer some of your questions in between the games. All right, so we are on the play. Okay, this looks keepable. Um, so we do have, if we look at my hand, we do have Once Upon a Time to hopefully try to find um, like an innkeeper or something relevant. But even if we don't, we have uh, a pretty good hand here. So we're going to keep. My hand is a little bit slow on the draw, but we should be able to catch up, so I'm going to yeah. keep this one. And I'm going to keep stressing this lesson. Once upon a time, play it when, if you don't have another play, like if I have a forest in my hand and I don't have an innkeeper, so if I find innkeeper, I'd want to play it, but when you don't have anything to play, don't play this card. I still see people, still people, still see people playing this on like my end step before their turn one. It's just like, draw your card. It just, I don't know. It's my yeah. biggest pet peeve. They're, they're <laughs> getting a little antsy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so now if we take a peek here um, at our choices here, we can either do Love Struck Beast or Questing Beast or Land. We don't really care about the land right now. Love Struck Beast is a good card, but we already have one, so we're going to go with the Questing Beast here. Put these at the bottom. Quest? Quest? <laughs> I must have missed that reference. Tigtone? You weren't, you weren't here for the Tigtone no, phenomenon. I don't think I was. I don't, whatever happened to that show? Your uh, turn. Not good things. <laughs> uh, I will play a Hallowed Fountain. Less, uh, less exciting turn. That is less exciting. Okay, so we're going to get in there for one. I am at 19. Okay, and now we have a choice between if we want to play one of these cards in our hands. Um, it's not great, of course, but... I think it is good enough to play one of them. So we're going to play this knight and pass it to you. Another 1-1. One, one. Uh, Interplanar Beacon, Shimmer of Possibility. Shimmer away. Uh, top four cards. And this is the one we need to make our hand work. So okay. rest on the bottom. And you don't have to reveal that? No. Because Would you like to? No. Okay. You only reveal when you have to find a specific kind of card. That Makes way, sense. make sure that you're you know, on the up and up. Not cheating. Yeah. All right. Put you to 17. Yep. I'll go to 18. And I'll play my cry beast. Oh, 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 oh. You ever played this on Arena? It just balls when it comes <laughs> into play. <laughs> it's adorable. Can't say I have. It's adorable. Okay. Uh, so I am just going to run this Narset straight into being dead. Okay. Uh, but I'll still get a card out of it. Uh, I do gain a life, so I'll okay. go to 18. And one, two, three, four. Um. So we didn't have the innkeeper to kind of just go bonkers, and that's what I was looking for for once upon a time. But think if I did, I would have already drawn two extra cards. I mean, this this card's just busted. It's a one mana one one. You're a one mana one one. <laughs> wow. Well, you are a human. Will you switch him out for your uh, your your naily stool, please? <laughs> we'll give you this Carnox chair. Um. Oh, I I'm, I'm just, I thought I was doing Shimmer Possibility again. I wouldn't have to reveal. Uh, so <laughs> I actually just have to do this because that's my only option. It's a okay. fairy. Okay. Well, <laughs> you can go. Oh, Thanks yeah, for wasting that camera time, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna take two, and we're gonna go on a quest. So, uh, you're going to go to 16. Face, 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 Yeah, face. that's unfortunate. So, I go to 7. Take 11, you go to 7, and I'll eat this. that. Your turn. And I think... I guess I'm not dead. Okay, that's good. You gotta have a clarion, that's I imagine. To, it's good to not be dead. Being alive is tight. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so, we have Fires of Invention. Okay. And I did just draw a Deafening Clarion. <laughs> so I could Clarion and hope that Corey doesn't have another one. Yep. To 1-1 uh, one, one to turn on the beast. Or I can Teferi Bounce Love Struck Beast, and then I'll definitely survive. Um, Reasonable. I, I think that is going to be my plan. So let's Teferi Bounce Love Struck Beast. Okay. Draw a card. And I gain a life, too. I'm at 8. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. All right, so now what do we want to do? I would say we attack everything at you. I will go to two. You deal four damage to the fairy. Yep. Chomp that. Um, now we're going to start with an innkeeper. So good call by uh, making the play you did because I did have a 1-1. One, one. Yep. Um, and then we will... Cast a knight, draw a card. Yep. And then we will... I haven't played a land yet. Then we'll cast a questing beast, draw a card. Yeah, a love strike beast. Oh, a love strike beast, yep. And then your turn. Okay, well, I certainly have to... Double Clarion? <laughs> no, I have Fave Wishes for Kai's Wrath. Oh, okay. Or okay. granted for Kai's Wrath. Uh... Old Ranky coming to get you. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Yep. <laughs> yep.
Yeah, and that's the nice thing is this deck is all about just trying to get you low and then haste creatures finish you off. And I was able to overextend into a wrath thanks to innkeeper here. And when you when you said, I hope he doesn't have a one mana creature in your hand, this was my hand here. Just three one drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you made the right choice. But yeah, I was just able to go over the top and I'll value here. And normally I wouldn't want to overextend because I had to expect there was a wrath coming. But with Innkeeper, you're allowed to because sure, if they die, that's fine. You want cards to go into your graveyard because you have fine finality. You have Order of Midnight to bring them back at some point. Yeah. And you're still replacing them. So what Innkeeper? really reminds me of is Curious Obsession. It, it really is the green Curious Obsession. It's kind of the same, you know? Yeah, it does well, that, that kind of busted things um, while being okay on its own, and yeah. Yeah, you know, what I really needed was a Clarion on turn three, because then you would have had a heart, like if you play Questing Beast, you can't attack with Lovestruck Beast, yep. and that would have, you know, given me, I think, enough time to stabilize. Because 100%. If even if I'm at four there and your Rankle puts me to one, I think I'm in good shape. Yeah. Well, if you're at four, a rankle kills you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five, whatever. Yeah. Okay, well, we are going to get sideboarding ready here, but before we do that, you got one question for us, Dan? I Your best one. Best one. Number one question. Okay, so um, uh, from Histeus, uh, thoughts on green-black adventure versus green-white adventure? When ooh, would ooh. you want to play one versus the other? Well, okay, so I think green-white adventures is a more aggressive take, so therefore it should have a better matchup against Golos. But I think green-black adventure just gets to play much better cards. Like, you have to play, like, Fairy Godmother and, like, all these cards to make Loxodon good, and I don't think Loxodon is busted enough to build a deck around. You know, Mono White may... Back in last season with History of Benalia, Loxodons, that deck was good enough for Loxodon, but I just, I think Green-White is better against specifically Golos and maybe specifically like a Jeskai Fires list, but I think uh, Green-Black Adventures is just a better deck, um, personally. But. Um, they're, they're very different decks, and I yeah. know you tend to prefer... Um, you know, mid more mid rangey decks with good removal. I like green white um, style decks, you know, but uh, uh, yeah, the, but they it's hard for like it's hard for me to compare them because they're just yeah. very different. You know, when one style of deck is good, the other one will, it'll be the better deck, mm -hmm. and it, it sort of depends on the, on the meta game around them. I yeah. think last weekend I would have preferred playing Selesnia because I think people were a little unprepared for, you know, just straight-up aggressive decks, and Selesny Adventures did win the standard classic in the hands of Aaron Barich. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I think as people adjust, and the metagame becomes a little bit more goal less Golo-centric, and, uh, you know, more aggro decks come in, and then people adjust to those aggro decks, the more powerful deck will be a little bit better. That said, you know, this deck is still pretty aggressive, the Golgari deck, and, and it does play really good cards. I like Questing Beast a lot, I like Lovestruck Beast, I like Rankle a lot. Um, and Assassin's Trophy, I think, is really good right now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I do think that the Golgari deck is significantly more powerful. So it, it, my default would be Golgari. Uh, but it, there are meta games where the Celestian deck is going to be really good. And yep. I'm a huge Loxodon fan. So I might be a little biased. I am too. I really am. I mean, just free mana to play, you know, like nine power on a board is just disgusting. It's so good. My Lanta. All right, good uh, good question as always, Hesteus. Thank you so much. And we are going to sideboard here. So we will be back in a couple of minutes with uh, Green Black Adventures against Jeskai Fires. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back here to sideboarding between Jeskai Fires and Golgari Adventures. Not a lot to do on my side. You know, the, these uh, Fave Wishes decks tend to be loaded up with tutor targets or witch targets in their sideboard. Uh, so we don't do a lot of actual sideboarding. I am going to bring in the one copy of Sarkin and the one Justice Strike. Neither of these are cards that I'm often going to be wishing for, uh, especially Justice Strike. You know, if I don't have fires, maybe sometimes I'll, I will wish I had something, you know, cheap to target. But usually I can just cast, fa cast the actual fairy uh, for the two mana and then at least have a blocker for whatever I was going to kill Yeah. Um, and, and go from there. So, and, and I want to have cheap spells to make sure Corey doesn't, you know, run me over in the early game like it, he did in game one. 
And then the Sarkin is actually pretty good, mainly due to the 4-4 four, four body. We normally see this card be really good by animating your Planeswalkers and dealing a ton of damage. Here it's the 4-4 four, four Dragon because it'll block Questing Beast, it'll check Rankle, uh, and then you know that's a really big deal. Those two threats are the ones that really close the game out yeah. uh, and put me under a lot of pressure. And kills the Death Touchers if I want to attack them. I mean, I just can't attack with them. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll even, you know, if I have a Dragon, it'll even trade with Love Stark Beast, right? Because it, yep. it'll take one from the Sarkin Static ability. Uh, so it checks all the bigger creatures, which is nice. Uh, yeah, and then all your like little 1-1s one -ones can't even attack. Yep. So I am going to be trimming some of the three mana Planeswalkers. You saw them not be very good in that game one. I don't want to overload on them. I just want to have enough to get to the to the you know turns four, turn five, turn six, uh, and stay at a really healthy life total. And just playing these Planeswalkers wasn't enough because of how powerful Questing Beast is. Yeah. Normally you would have had to send some bigger creature there, and I would have saved you know four or five damage, maybe even more for both of them. I would have saved one off the Teferi and then four off the Questing Beast if it couldn't you know double hit. Sure. So that, and if you know if I if I'm at seven and at two against that rankle. I'm feeling a lot a little better. better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, from my side, we're bringing in you know the classic uh, three duress here. Uh, this is one of the few matchups where I actually like duress because like even against Golos, you can't bring it in. Like all their their wrath of god effects are creatures now. Like so, it becomes quite awkward. But duress is excellent here, um, as well as one Davriel Rogue uh, Shadow Mage here, a card that we haven't seen a lot. Uh, one of the Planeswalkers that's had a, a, a little splash in decks here and there. But I think this card is great. Um, I, I really like it just as a one of. I think uh, Piotr Glukowski filled a lot of holes in his sideboard by just having this be the default like fourth card to bring in. When you want to side some, like every matchup, you kind of need to side something out with this deck because you have like main deck legions and main deck murderous rider. Um, you know, so up against decks where they don't have early creatures, you know, you have cards you need to take out. So we're bringing in these four. We're taking out legions in because they have no targets except for uh, um, a dragon here. Um, we're taking out the masker girl because it's also bad. And then uh, what? One once upon a time because we don't want the fourth one. Now that we're bringing in four spells, uh, I very commonly trim on once upon a time uh, down to three when I go to sideboard with these games uh, just because you're almost always bringing out in spells in exchange for uh, uh, some amount of creatures. So, yeah, this That's is what we're going to do. All right. <clears throat> so you're going to be going first. I will. All right. And how are we uh, looking for those questions over there, Dan? So we got another one from Histeus who asked okay. earlier, but we weren't playing Just Guy Fires. So sure. I didn't <laughs> keep note of it. <laughs> Any tips on how to set up a wish board? How often do you want cards that you only ever wish for and never actually sideboard for? Um, You know, pretty often. But my, my big thing is I think people... It, with tutor tar tutor or uh, you know packages toolboxes of any kind, I think people tend to go overboard. Yeah, uh, you want to you know sort of nail down the most common scenarios, have your card for those scenarios, and be very minimalist with them. Yeah, like even, like this sideboard I'm looking at, it, there's probably too many wish targets in this sideboard. Like, yeah, probably. Uh, and now th that said. Uh, there's a lot of things that the Fires of Invention deck has issues sideboarding because once you have Fires down, you can't cast spells in your opponent's turn. So you don't want that many counter spells like a lot of these blue mid range decks often have. So maybe there's you know less demand for regular sideboard cards, and so you have more room for the, the toolbox. But my my biggest piece of advice when people are building any sort of two-year package is just just don't go overboard. Yeah. You know, figure out the 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 cards that you are consistently wanting in different scenarios and just play those. And, you know, if occasionally a corner case scenario comes up and you don't have the card to cover it, you're you're probably better off having cards that are, you know, more widely applicable anyway. And yeah. No, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I'm uh, I, I kind of have no comment on this one. I didn't I had I didn't pay a lot of attention to Fae of Wishes. And, you know, that's just not, not normally the magic I play is like having like, you know, masterminds, inquisition, sideboards and stuff like that. So I'm pretty lost when it comes to that. So I'll uh, I'll defer to Ross on this one. Yeah. So, you know, like uh, let's take a look at the sideboard. Okay. <laughs> we got I, I like the end of the God Eternals, you know, threat yeah. and, a, and a piece of life game. The Kai's Wrath is obviously great. Yeah. The, the Dovin's Veto is weird to me. I think that's good. We already have we, yeah. we have three different counter spells. Yeah. Are we bringing in these counter spells when we're sideboarding? Yes. If we're if we're doing that, then maybe you want three counter spells. Yeah, you're definitely bringing in those in. Um, I like having you know a big threat. Nickel Bolas is a good piece oh, yeah. of card advantage. Um, this Ashiok I assume is against Golos. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that seems reasonable. 
Really powerful removal spell. Okay, that's yep. fine. Uh, this is probably for the mirror when there's a lot of planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. This yep. one's a little, little skeptical of that one. We have a way to exile an artifact or enchantment. Good one. He's also, you know, generates some card advantage, keeps the gas flowing. And this is another big, like, over the top effect. I don't see when that would maybe, ever come up personally, may, but maybe we're yeah. a little, maybe we're a little high on like big over the top effects. Yeah. Um, but th this is close. Like, I, I might trim w w one or two cards from where this is. Yeah. I've, I've been playing this on Arena. Um, Keeney's build, actually, uh, I was a little bit more close to. Okay. I have never gone to plain white celebration before. Uh, just, now you're gonna have to. I never had. I never had a chance for that. Um, I did have um, Garrick in there. Ooh, now you're speaking my language. Yeah. Garrick to me uh -huh. is a similar card to Nickel Nickel Bullets. Bullets. Yeah, and except yeah, just I, a little worse it's personally. Like, yeah, it's the, it's the Planeswalker build, so it's like you always want to try and diversify because you have Chandra, Ugin, yeah, Bolas, Garrick. You have, I think it's with Garrick, it would be like seven or eight. Sure, sure. So yeah. always try to keep gaining life. All right, how's your hand? Uh, this hand seems solid. We've got some of our more important cards. Mana's a little awkward, but we can start on this castle and be good. Yeah, my hand is a little weak here. I think this is actually a pretty close mulligan, or pretty close keep, um, but you can definitely mulligan this as well. I'm going to try it. Okay, I'll start on Castle Vantress. Okay. Ooh, that was good. Okay, once upon a time. Now we want to find a specific thing, and we got a lot of looks at it. Didn't hit what we wanted, um, but even just a land here is pretty strong. So I think we'll just go like this. Um, definitely looking for an innkeeper here, but we'll settle. All right, and then we'll go a knight and say go. We don't have quite enough mana for settle the wreckage, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's why. Arigato Corleone brings us up. Uh, you can use um, Plain White Celebration to proliferate four times and then ultimate. Oh, uh -huh. that's pretty spicy. Okay. I, I like it. Now I understand. Still seems a little too cute, but it's cute. cute. Yeah. <laughs> now it makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. That yeah, was that, a bit that, of a that's the kind of thing I'm usually against. I'll attack. I'm a 19. Immediately punished for playing this first turn. We'll say go. <laughs> uh, that's a tilt. A T? That is a... A large tea. <laughs> Iced tea or um, brewed hot tea? Uh, I am going to get this innkeeper off the battlefield, though. Yeah, good call. I have a feeling there's a Love Stark Beast in my future. <laughs> Done. Uh, pass the turn. Don't want that Love Stark Beast to cantrip. <laughs> now it'll probably just make a Shaheen. Well, now we are going to Order of Midnight bringing back innkeeper. Um, and then we will... Uh, put this on an adventure as well. We did draw it, so we'll put a Shaheen into play. That Your turn. That's a pretty good turn. Not bad. And now we are... Ooh, okay, that's a good draw. Uh-oh. Um, so I am going to shock in this Hallowed Fountain, go to 17. Is it time to burn? No, it is time to cast Drawn from Dreams. Oh, that's pretty good. So we will just... Yeah, let's look at the top seven. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Pick two of your faves. Uh, yeah, definitely going to want these two. I think it's, don't think it needs any explanation. A lot of lands and the rest sure, of them that we sure. don't need. <laughs> and then I'll pass the turn. All right. So we're going to untap. Okay, that was a pretty good draw. We probably just want to get that going. Um, yeah, I don't see any reason not to. Uh, we'll do some questing. I'll take two. So you're at 18. I take five to 12. Your turn. Thy questing beast. Let's go. Now, we could have gotten a little value with uh, Edgewall Innkeeper and played a Lovestruck Beast that turn. That was another thing, but I was a little afraid of another Clarion. Okay. We found our fires off their Drawn from Dreams, okay. and I'm going to follow it up with something that affects the battlefield, and it's going to be a Sarkin. We'll gain a life off the beacon. Okay. Go to 13, and I'll make a dragon. Sounds great. Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> go. Pass the turn. All right. I have a feeling we're going to get Murderous rider pretty dirty here, but got to do what I can. You sure are. Yeah, definitely hit the dragon here because of the questing beast being so good. Yep. I, you go to 16. All right, and then you and you. So I take five, go to eight. Yep. The skills four to the Sarkin. Yep. Um, now I have a option to play Innkeeper here, but I don't think there's really a need to because if there's a Wrath, I would rather hold it for value, so we'll just pass it to you. 
Now it's a scary turn. It's a very scary turn. That is a good draw. Um, so I will. I really want to get this questing beast off the battlefield. Makes sense. And so we'll spend our turn doing that. I'm going to cast Fay of Wishes. Okay. And we're going to find Enter the God Eternals. Ooh. It's a pretty uh, good one. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is on an adventure. Uh, and then Enter the God Eternals, deal four to the questing beast and roll my... Veil of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> roll myself for four. Okay. I gain four. I go to 12. Yep. Uh... Oh, definitely still want to mill myself. I don't think I have any synergies with it, but when you have Order of Midnight in your deck, I don't want to fill your graveyard with more options. Yep, and I don't think we have a token, but we'll give you this. Yeah, zombie army, and then want to save this temple until after I milled, so we'll play this and scry one. Okay. Um, that's uh, kind of an interesting card, actually. Um, you know, it's it on the surface, it looks just like another land, but it m could be worth several life points, and I've got... A lot of gas left over. I think I'm going to keep this on top. Okay. Uh, All right. We don't like the sound of a lot of gas left over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we want to start generating some value to uh, now at this point, we just kind of have to outpace fires, even though that's a very hard thing to do. Um, so we're going to start with an innkeeper and then we're going to go with love struck beast draw card. Yep. And that's all we can do for now. So I'll pass to you. Now we're afraid. <laughs> Very afraid. Okay. Uh, I don't have an answer for this innkeeper as of yet. Yay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Beacon. I'm going to play Narset. That will okay. hopefully, you know, shut it down a bit. Sure. I gain two, go to 14. Yep. It's minus this Narset. Uh, Teferi, once again, the only option. Okay. And then I will play a Sarkin the Masterless. Gain okay. some more life. Go to 16. So 16 all, and we'll make a dragon. Oh, yeah, you have another one. Okay, gotcha. So you got uh, 16. All right. And so that's my two spells. We've got two big blockers back, uh, which is nice. The Sarkin will prevent the one ones from attacking. I believe that goes to two. Yep. Oh, two. My bad. Okay. Uh, Sounds great. I'll pass the turn. All right. So, I mean, that is a great turn, but we can kind of have a nice turn ourselves here. Um, so we're going to start with Murderous Rider on uh, the Cedric. Cedric is interesting. You had a 14. A 14, and then Assassin's Trophy, the dragon. Okay. Then we'll kill your walkers. Yeah, that is pretty good. Not bad. We're just trying to value. All right, and then it's going to be your turn. So I will activate this castle on your end step. Okay. Keep trying to find more gas. The pure gasoline. At this point, we have plenty of lands, so any more lands we draw, we'll probably keep in our hand to hopefully uh, return this uh, Fave Wishes eventually. Makes Oops, sense. Right, too. Um, neither of these seems good to me, so let's bottom both. Okay. And uh, do I want to upkeep? Definitely an option, since you don't use your mana anyways. Yeah. I, I've got enough stuff to do now that I don't think I'm desperately searching. I'd rather just wait. Okay. Uh, based on what, how the next couple turns play out. That scares me. Uh, yeah, because I do have a, a drawn from Green Sea. Okay, sure. So you get to find your best spell here. I'm going to sacrifice this land while you do your thing. Um, okay. Uh, definitely taking these two because they're far and away the best cards. Okay. And we're going to have only one more spell to deal with this turn, so that's not as bad, but I'm sure whatever spell it's going to be, it's going to be just a delight to deal with. Uh, it's not going to be too upsetting. It's just going to be a 1-4. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. All right. So now you can discard that at any time. Um, so we'll untap. And now we want to really try to uh, pivot ourselves in the right direction here. And how do we do so? 
Well, I'm going to for sure want to get some value off some of my adventure cards while I still have Innkeeper. So we're going to start with a Murderous Rider. Draw a card. Yep. Okay. Didn't hit anything too exciting. Um, now we either play another adventure creature and draw another card or play the card in our hand, um, which is a solid card right now, but it's pretty scary. Um, so I think I would rather gain value. So we're going to order a midnight draw card. Okay, not the best. And then we will attack for five. I'll go to 11. Okay, your turn. On your end step, I will scry to you. Okay. Uh, this seems like a reasonable card to have access to, but we'll bottom the land. Okay. I will draw for turn. Sure. I will time wipe bouncing the fave wishes. That seems pretty good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that seems quite that. strong. Love doing that. Murderous Rider goes to the bottom. And then I will... Um, I probably don't want to play this Teferi that Corey knows about just because um, it could just get questing beasted. Um, I guess I could Teferi bounce my own fires and then play something else. Yeah. No, oh, that seems actually quite That's good. A very good play. Yeah. Um, so how much mana would I have left over? I could play the land for my hand to do that. Three, five, eight, nine. I'd have six mana left. I mean, all what I'd be doing is casting granted. Uh, and then, uh, then my fires becomes like vulnerable to duress. That doesn't. That, no, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would just be recasting the fires. So I yeah. might as well just to fairy, you know, minus three for no for nothing. Sure. And draw a card, <clears throat> or I can just cast Fey here. I think I'll just cast Fey of Wishes, and we'll set up for next. Okay, turn. you said it. He cast, cast Fey of Wishes. Granted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've all misclicked that and had to learn the hard way. Yeah, uh, and I think we're you know we're in pretty good shape here. So I think I'm just gonna get nickel balls. No, and then we'll pass the turn. All right. Okay, so we're gonna start with. All right, we can cast both the cards in our hand, and it's okay. I guess that's what we have to do, but we're not looking great here. So, Davriel, discard. I will discard the land. Okay, and questing beast. Yep. Getcha. I will go to seven. All right, and we'll play a land and ship it to you. And step scry two. Yep. Um, don't think Shimmer is good enough to keep just because I only get two spells a turn. Yep, so makes we'll sense. Both. And then draw. And that is a lot of things. Um, All the things. a lot of things. I don't like so, that. What am I worried about? Another questing beast I might be a little worried about is the last card in your hand. Could be. Um, so, I mean, that would be a problem, but not a huge one. Uh, you know what I wish? Uh, you wish for a fey wishes? No. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just deal with the things you have. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so I'll play Nicol Bolas. Okay. I gain two. I go to nine. Yep. I'll, uh, let's uh, minus on the questing beast. Okay. And then I will prison realm the Davriel. Okay. And scry one. Sure. And again, Shimmer goes to the bottom. Pass the turn. All right. So Probably getting questing beast again. You might be. But it's going to have to be found off of Once Upon a Time. Okay. <laughs> so Once Upon a Time here. All right. And we found it. Don't know if that's going to even be enough for us. But, yes, we will. Questing Beast, attack you. That'll put me to five. Play this land and play a Murderous Rider. Now we're Hellbent. Your turn. End step, Scry 2. Yep. Yeah, now we just have officially used all our resources, which is pretty hard to do for this green-black adventure deck. So, I mean, now, I mean, when we play a fair game, it's pretty tough to win. I mean, if we can top deck, like, a find or a order of midnight or something like that, we could start generating value again. But otherwise, we're just going to succumb to this uh, fires. Yeah. We're going to uh, burn to the fires. So let's play granted again. Okay. 
Probably and, Kaya's Wrath or... Um, could get Kaya's Wrath. I could get Plain Wide Celebration. It's a celebration! I think I just want to get Plain... I'm at five. So what modes would I be selecting off of Plain Wide Celebration? I would be selecting... Uh, I guess the 2-2s two can't block questing beasts, so that's actually a problem. So let's yep. probably not do that one. Just play Wrath and deal with all my cards in my hand, and then you have Fae of Wishes, you know? Play it safe. Yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, you're at 5, so you don't die to another questing beast. So. Yeah, I'll yep. just Wrath. All right, this goes to the uh, bottom. So that's two spells. Pass the turn. All right. Yeah, one turn of Reprieve here, and the game will basically be over. Yeah, oh, I'll duress you. Uh, you want Narset or Teferi? I concede. <laughs> I'll now, concede so we can play a third game yeah. in time. <laughs> now this fave, which is, is going to get plain white celebration, and I'm just going to return Sark and Nicol Bolas, make a 2-2 I've already game conceded. <laughs> and, that, and that'll do it. I'm already dead, man. You've already killed me. Okay. Twice so over. What's cyborg card? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Do I need to, Nicol Bolas <laughs> is over there. Enter the God Eternals is over there. Yep. I think that's all of them. No, I mean, Maybe. honestly, I think the biggest turning point in the game was that Enter the God Eternals. That Enter the God Eternals was really brutal for me. Um, and, I mean, you just, you didn't have an insane draw or anything, but you got to do Drawn of Dreams to set up your turn five, and then from there on go fires into the Enter the God Eternal, which not only killed my best creature, but stopped my attack for even a turn, and then that was enough to put you back into the game. I had some decent exchanges, like killing your two tokens, and then killing two Planeswalkers, but it just wasn't enough. You know, the, the values of the fire deck is pretty close to as inevitable yeah. as Golos, um, as it can be, um, but it's a little bit more of a glass cannon, since you have to have your fires to do so. Uh, unlike Golos, where it's Golos is just a good card in your deck. It's not the deck. Yeah. yeah. No, the, the combination of the early clarity in that game and the Enter the God Eternals, both dealing with the first questing yep. beast and gaining a bunch of life, kept enough pressure on me that we go into the long game and yeah. I'm going to dominate the long game. Yeah, that Enter the God Eternals definitely earned its sideboard spot, that's for sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> definitely a good one. That card is... It's been a very good sideboard card ever since it was printed. Oh, yeah. Ever, we all kept trying to put it in our main decks early on. That, that was not good. That wasn't the best, yeah. Well, Dan, you got a, you got one question for us while we shuffle up for Game 3? Yeah, a couple of people have been asking this about the Jeskai Fires list. They're surprised that we're going with the uh, Planeswalker list and not the Cavalier list. Yeah, I was... You know uh, which one that is, Ross? Yeah, yeah. the Juza list, yeah. Yeah. Um... So I just went with the list that uh, was the highest finishing in the open. Uh, I believe this was 12th place, although for some reason it, it was only listed with a 14-card sideboard. Nice. Uh, oh, they were right. They were going two over the top. They're like, I just don't need well, all these cards. You, I'm going to take one of them out. You, you want to know what card I added? Uh, the 15th card? I, I just added one to the list. Which one? 15, Enter the God Eternals. Really? Yeah. They didn't have that? It, 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 it might have been the missing card. I don't know. Maybe it was mistyped or yeah, I, yeah. I was trying to look into that. I honestly couldn't figure that part out. Well, yeah. so. well, get that person on the line. Yeah. If you're in there and you took 11th at this SCG, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna be on the play for this third and final game. But uh, <laughs> as for the list, like you know the. I, I was talking earlier about the Cavalier list and how it has that combo to end the game. This list it combos with Fave Wishes and Nickel Bolas and Plain White Celebration, right? Yeah. As you do the, the proliferate. So you still have that way to just sort of end the game once you get going with Fires. You can still play that grindy game. I think the difference in them uh, is that the setup cards in the Planeswalker deck are these three mana Planeswalkers as opposed to five mana Cavaliers. Uh, and so you're a little bit better when you don't draw Fires of Invention. Yeah. Uh, but I do like the Cavalier list as well. And I think Narset is just so good at finding fires and then yeah. playing that into something is just so sweet. All right, so if we take a peek at my hand here, this hand isn't insanely exciting or anything, but we got a little disruption as well as a, a pretty solid threat, so we're going to keep. Uh, but we're not jumping uh, for joy on this one. Yeah, I don't think this is a keep. It's just too slow. I only have two lands, so I, I desperately need to draw two lands in my next four draw steps just to have anything going. Uh, and even if I do that, I don't have a clarion for three. I have like Teferi and hope that's like yeah. enough to stall. I don't have a great follow up to fires. I'm pretty weak to duress. There, there's just too many, too many issues with that hand. Five, 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 five. Can we get some fives in chat, y'all? <laughs> but we, should, we can get another uh, question. We should have a five emote. We <laughs> with should. With somebody mulligans. We should. That might be a little toxic as us, but you know, here amongst friends, I'll yell for five until the so, day I die. 
Uh, from Death Magic 37, what about Alayla in a uh, main deck for Esper stacks? It usually plays 16 to 17 artifacts or enchantments. Yeah, I think the stats on that card is just not good enough. I, I thought about it right when uh, we had our really sweet day with Esper stacks on versus live. I was like, oh, you know, this sounds interesting playing that as a two of in the board. And then I just played it and it just was not high impact enough. But I tried. I did try out there. So great question. <laughs> Okay. I tried. First mulligan. Hopefully First only of mulligan. many. <laughs> uh, this hand is significantly better. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as Dan can see. So wow. we uh, um, so we don't have fires yet, and I think because of that, I'm going to put this fave wishes on the bottom. Uh, I have enough time to like draw good things to go with it, but I just want to keep my hand that has the most early interaction. So we'll put that one on the bottom. Makes sense to me. We're going to start with a Shaheen. All right. I Adventure. will start with a card Shaheen probably likes more than a 5-5. Five five, <laughs> uh, a land that enters the battlefield tap. Probably. Um, and this card is just going to be a little bit too slow still. So that can go on the bottom. For okay. Now. We're going to untap. Okay. We drew an interesting one. Um, we are going to go land, attack. I'm a 19. And your turn. Uh, re... Did we accidentally draw the uh, the turn two <laughs> once upon a time? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'm just shimmering here. Me too! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, I think we have to get a little bit risky since this card is so important. Um, I guess we do have more ways to dig for extra copies, actually. So maybe I'm supposed to just take a land here? This is tough. Um, definitely a tough one. A toughie, huh? Yeah, I, I'm actually. Yeah, I'm gonna go against my first instinct. I think this hand needs a really needs a land based on what our last two draw steps were. Okay. Uh, and we'll we'll yeah. All right, so then we'll do ours here, and now we have land or a knight here. So this was not a good uh, once upon a time on our part. Um, I mean, they almost never are on turn two, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we will go with the knight. Foul Meyer knight. All right, then we'll on top. Yep. Okay, that's a pretty strong draw. Um, As opposed to a strong jaw. <laughs> I'll attack for one. 18. And since uh, Fires of Invention can't be cast next turn, we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to take two and get the beast going. Your turn. Okay. We got the clock. The clock is assembled. Uh, so I will shock myself to 16 Okay. and pass the turn. And pass the turn. So this is probably a justice strike. Justice is going to be served. Um, now, what do we want to do about it? Okay. Uh, declare tax. Six. Still want to deal with the five five for sure. Yep. I'll take one. Go to fifteen. All right. Um. And now we want to see what you're up to. It's pretty good. You're gonna probably get my clarion. Okay. Yeah, you got some good. You, that's you can for take sure. one of two narsets or yeah. the clarion. Don't know how much I actually care about your Clarion right now. Got a good um, hand against it. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> yeah, it's just not that uh, problematic for me. Fay of Wishes without fires, I'm not that afraid of either. I think I'm just going to take a Narset here. Interesting. Yeah, we'll take a Narset. Um, we'll sacrifice Fabled Passage to go get a swamp. And now I think I just want to adventure this knight, a mode that doesn't really get activated that often. Um, but yeah, we're going to do it. Just draw a card and lose a life. Go to 17. Yep. Okay, your turn. <clears throat> oh, I have a feeling we're about to get a uh, questing beast did, did, did on our next turn. Oh. I don't know if but that's a word, but... Gotta do what I can do. <laughs> okay. 
So let's minus two this Narset. And... Uh, not great options. Uh, I think we'll just take another Narset. Okay. I think no, that's better than that Teferi here. Much. And then we'll play our Temple. Okay. Scry one, and that's a Fae of Wishes we do not want. Oh, come on. You can have another Fae. Yeah. Unfortunately, hit both the land we needed and the fires off of that Shimmer. Five, yep. Yep. Uh, I am at ten. Your turn. Didn't hit the land we wanted, but we, of course, drew the second to worst thing possible as a once upon a time, but... <laughs> Um, this is a, uh, this is going to be a weird play. <laughs> Are we going to fey? But I think I have to fey now for a card I can't cast and try to dig. Um, and the question is which card I'm going to want once I actually get my fires. And I think I'm going to need to gain some baby, life let my with this enter the God Eternals. Uh, as opposed to the Kai's Wrath, the 4-4 should you know, stabilize pretty well against what you have left. We love the sounds of this. So I'm casting Granted. And we're seeing really the vulnerability of uh, this Fires of Invention deck if you don't have it. There's another Fave Wishes that we do not want. Okay. I have put three of them on the bottom of my library. <laughs> <laughs> love it. We love it. Okay, so now we're going to start with a generous innkeeper bringing you a couple pints of ale there. And then we'll send this off an adventure, draw a card. Yep. Um, we will... Adventure, draw a card, and then get in there for five. I go to five. The value. Your turn. The straight value. Look at her hand, it's just absolute gasoline now at this point. Oh, sorry, it's gasoline and we have a once upon a time. <laughs> uh, so definitely want to deal with what's going on on that side of the battlefield. I was hoping <laughs> that we that we would not, would not see Lovestruck Beast specifically, yeah. So I could go Narset Fay here, uh, and hopefully hold you back for a turn. But now I think we have to go Clarion Fay, so that's what we'll do. Okay, Clarion. Uh, which mode? Mm. For your clarion? Both of them. Oh, okay. okay. Correct. That's the correct line. You can go. <laughs> no reason not to. And now removal spell 1-1 one, one will kill us. <laughs> and that is a pretty likely outcome. Take two. 15. I will go with uh, find. Get back these two 1-1s. One, we got to dig. Innkeeper. Yep. Mer uh, knight. And Assassin's Trophy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just didn't get a whole lot going here. Yeah. Without didn't have the fires. fires. Yeah, without fires, the deck looked so much worse. Yeah, I did see yeah. I did see fires off Shimmer, but at that point, I still only had the two lands. Yeah. Uh, and or, uh, no, I, I had a third land, but I like just didn't, didn't have a fourth. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have a fourth land, and I had other. I had like multiple Narsets in my hand to try to dig towards another fires. Yeah. Uh, and I and you know, but I would have. Ahead. You would have discarded it if you yeah. had chosen it because I dressed you yeah. the turn after. So uh, that that was already awkward. So my draw ended up being awkward. But e I was going to say, even if I had, you know, the fourth land uh, or taken the fires, you time the duress obviously perfectly. Yeah. Uh, it's very important when your opponent is playing really key cards. If you can, you're, you want to hold on to those discard spells until the turn before they can cast them. Exactly. It, that way they've seen the maximum number of cards. Yeah. It's most likely to be in their hand at that point. That's a great lesson. I want to stop you on. Sorry to interrupt you. But yeah. like if I had just no play on turn one and I had a duress I don't care if you have a one drop two drop or really three drops I start to concern about but I wouldn't cast it on one even if I have no other play I see a lot of players firing off duresses just because they have it and they have open mana and well sometimes that is correct not always and most of the time it's not you want to time it correctly like Ross was saying yeah you know it's possible I was supposed to take the fires off of that uh off of that shimmer and just hope to draw the lands because fires is so important in my deck. Yeah. Obviously it would have gotten dressed, so it wouldn't have mattered. I'm looking at my deck here and literally the bottom two cards were two fires invention. Because that's the fay I put on the bottom for my opening hand. Classic. Uh so yeah, that that's a bit of a problem. And if but, we look at uh the matchup, it 
my deck was basically uh, a tale of two cards. It was Questing Beast was dominating you, absolutely dominating you, and yeah. Innkeeper was giving me the tools to be able to get to Questing Beast. Now, of course, I had a lot of key removal spells that ended up actually winning me in the games in different scenarios, but Innkeeper got me to those cards, got me to Assassin's yeah. Trophy, got me to Murderous Riders, and Questing Beast put the pedal to the metal, and it made you say, it made you answer something immediately, so... Yeah, no, yeah. And, and it made me answer something immediately and allowed you to both deal with my planeswalkers and put me under a lot of pressure. Yep. So it's an incredibly tempo positive way of dealing with planeswalkers. Yep. We already say that haste creatures are good against planeswalkers, and this is a level even beyond that. Yeah. So uh, really incredible what that card can do against yep. Planeswalker decks. And, you know, if we see more Questing Beasts, then you're definitely going to want to shift more towards the Cavalier version. And honestly, I mean, looking at where the metagame is shifting to now, I'm seeing a lot of people trying to answer um, Golos with Gruul, saying that it has a above 50% matchup against it. That Gruul deck has four Questing Beasts. This is my personal favorite deck, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be biased because this is the dropping bombs that I chose for tomorrow. So check it out if you want a little bit more in-depth analysis of the deck that I played, but... I plug a four-year-old article and it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, You yeah. plug a thing coming out tomorrow and it's perfectly fine. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. But I think you yeah. said it right, is Questing Beast is kind of the answer to deal with these Golos decks, and this is my favorite choice, and we're going to see my second favorite choice to deal with Golos coming up after the break. You got anything else before we go? No, I'm, uh, I'm going to be playing Selesnya Adventures. So yes. we're going to get the other adventure deck out here. That is, it's going to be playing against Gruul. We're playing for the marbles. Should Ooh. be a good matchup. How much of a break do we need, Dan? Let's do it. Five, five, five minutes. Yeah, we're right on time here. Five minutes will be good. So we'll be back you know, in a short amount of time. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss it.